Hi everyone, Darwin here. Welcome back to the ToadyWee Workshop. What I'm making today is called an inlay. It's where you inset one type of wood into another in a pattern or a shape or a design. And it looks really spectacular if it works. This is all done on a CNC. A lot of the instructions you'll find online require you to have a very expensive piece of software, B-Carve or something like that. But this method that I'm going to show you can be done using any software that's used to generate the code for an inlay. Chris Powell did a good video of why this works and I'll put that link in the description below. My inlay project today is similar to an English folly. It's actually something that's almost practically useless but relatively ornate. My friend Donna has this outhouse that we built for her and she's actually put a tub in it but because it has no running water there are two holes in the tub where the tap would come out. So what we're going to put in there are two pieces of wood that fill the holes and one says hot and one says cold. So they actually do nothing but they look pretty good. So as with any CNC project you start with your drawing and I use Inkscape. But you can use something like Adobe Illustrator or other vector based programs. So I've drawn a circle, I've picked a font, I've typed hot on one layer, cold on another layer. And this is for the carve portion. So the text is going to be carved in, so it'll be recessed into the wood. The circle is going to be carved out as a part, so this will be a disc. Then we have to create the part that's inverted, the part that's going to be recessed into the other piece of wood. I'm going to save some space on my carve. I'm going to do both words at the same time. And you have to mirror the text so that you end up with something that's going to fit into what you've carved out. So I've ended up with three pieces here. The inlay and two carves. Next you go over to your CAM software, uh, that's computer aided manufacturing, but I guess it's just where we throw in our designs and generate the code that runs the machines. Uh, you'll use a V-bit of some sort, I use a 30 degree V-bit, that's uh, quite steep. However your CAM software works, select your design so that it knows where it wants to carve. Again this first part is for the carve in, so it's recessed into the wood. And I'm just generating the carve for the circle separately, so I'll run the same code on both pieces. For this I'm using a 1 8 inch end mill. The next part, and the most important part for this process, is to create the inlay, the piece of wood that's going to go into the recesses that we've carved earlier. We use the same V-bit, but instead of selecting the inside of our design, we're going to select the outside of the design. I've got a rectangle surrounding this so that it defines the rest of the area we need to clear. The key to getting this inlay to work is to set the depth limit and the start depth correctly. So the depth limit I'm going to set to 2 millimeters. That means the height of the actual carving is going to be 2 millimeters. And the start depth is going to be 1 millimeter. So that, that carving is going to start 1 millimeter down from my surface. You usually do this when you're trying to do a carving at the bottom of a pocket, in this case a pocket that would be a millimeter deep. But because we haven't created a pocket, we're actually going to end up with a tapered version of our design, where the design, in this case the words hot and cold, is accurate one millimeter into the wood, and we have a narrowing version of hot and cold rising up to the surface of our wood. And it's this taper that's going to create a really accurate fit for the carve that we've done on our other pieces of wood. 